G'day interwebs. Now I've been involved in an ongoing discussion on Craft Nation's uh, video Absolute Miracle No One Died in Quake in New Zealand. Uh, check out the video if you like, I'll see if I can put a, a link to it. Now my first comment was to call Craft Nation on his Our Prayers Worked comment. Now as an atheist I just react when I see a self-serving comment like that. I mean you never see Christians saying Oh darn, sorry Haiti, I guess our prayers didn't work. Or, you know, when things go right, it's praise Jesus. When things go wrong, God, Jesus, is just as much as responsible. Tsunami in Indonesia, praise Jesus. Volcano in Indonesia, our prayers are answered. It just never seems to happen. Anyway, a Moroccan raster, going by the tag of Lion Entity, asked, what about all the innocent people dying down in Palestine. Well, if he just said people dying in Palestine, it's fine. Well, not that people dying in Palestine is fine, uh, just that there's nothing objectionable about asking for prayers for people dying in Palestine, uh, as long as you can't actually do something concrete to help them, in which case saying prayers is pretty useless if you can actually do something real. But anyway, <sighs> Lion Entity had to say, innocent people in Palestine. Well, I can't let spin like that go unchallenged when I see it. I've got to wonder, how many Palestinians really are innocent? And he replied with stuff like the Jews bombing, murdering and raping the Palestinians, and I don't really buy the murdering and raping part. Sounds more like a motive spin to me. So I pointed out there being a victim and being innocent are not necessarily the same thing. After all, the Jews have to be the biggest victims in all of time. Are they innocent? It's a pedantic point, but I'm a programmer and words have precise meanings to me. Sorry. Anyway, he replied again, self-defense, lived in peace with the Jews, a legal state of Israel, defending against invaders. This has all got nothing to do with the Christchurch earthquake, so I mailed Lion Entity directly, and in my second email to him was about 5k of text explaining my take on the Israel-Palestinian situation. Maybe I'll make a video of that if anybody's really that interested. And that's died. But now it's a month later, and some florist from Christchurch called Amy, not so much as found Craft Nation's video and has a bone to pick with me. Disproving God's existence with the New Zealand versus Haiti earthquakes is pretty weak and ignorant argument considering God has nothing to do with the structures that keep poor nations poor, unable to avoid basic infrastructure. Don't blame God for something most in the Western world, even you, partake in grace and peace from Christchurch. Huh? I wasn't trying to disprove God's existence. Uh, any disproof of God would involve the logical inconsistencies of an omnipotent God, but leaves us free will, so therefore God isn't omnipotent because we've got free will. Essentially, God cannot create a fence he can't jump over, therefore he's not an omnipotent, therefore he's not God. But anyway, keeping poor nations poor. There's just no way to reply to... Uh, something like that in the 500 characters of the YouTube reply, so I'm making this video. Now, Haiti has been looted by the Duvalier family, perhaps even by Aristide. It's one of the most corrupt countries in the world. They now have a vicious cycle where aid makes up 40% of their economy. Now, how is a Haitian farmer to compete with free food aid? It's a similar story across most of the developing world. A couple of the evils that the West could address are protectionism. I mean, the EU pays Polish farmers to grow beets for sugar, which blocks the cane sugar exports from the third world. <laughs> this is not efficient, but I suppose the problem is rural areas vote conservative, so conservative governments protect rural areas with subsidies and protectionism. Uh, for all that, people in the third world have to bootstrap themselves out of poverty. You know, good governance, education, can work. I mean, look at Ghana, Zambia, Mozambique. These countries are getting better, okay? And, and they're doing it themselves, mostly. Anyway, but there's still more for me, not so much. Yes, innocent Palestinians. Some may be extremists, but when you're a 
persecuted nation whose land and basic human rights are being strategically taken by another based on a biblically inaccurate as well as humanitarianly unjust understanding, you're probably going to get angry too. How about those who have lost their homes in Christchurch take your home without your permission? No, having evil done to you doesn't give you the right to become a bully yourself. Shalom. I can see you haven't taken the point that being a victim doesn't necessarily make you innocent anyway. Yes, the Palestinians have had a shitty deal. They've lost their land. But they're still assholes. The 1974 Japanese embassy attack in Kuwait, 1980 Paris synagogue bombing, the Munich massacre of the 72 Olympics, 1981 Antwerp bombing, Attack on the Saudi Embassy in Khartoum. Coastal Road Massacre. The Dolphinarium Discotheque. Suicide Bombing. Jerusalem Bus 19 Suicide Bombing. The Ma'al Lot Massacre. The Passover Massacre. The Maxim Restaurant Suicide Bombing. P. Galot Bombing. The Sabina Flight 571. Savoy Hotel Attack. Sparrow Restaurant Suicide Bombing. Schwama Restaurant Bombing. Swiss Air Flight 330. Pan Am Flight 110. Avivan School Bus Massacre. Merkaz Harav Massacre. The Zingoff Street Bus Bombing. Hijacking of the Achille Lauro. The Bet Lid Massacre. The Jaffa Road Bus Bombings. Kirat Menachem Bus Bombing. The 1979 Naharia attack, the Lod Airport Massacre, Ma'ale Akraban Massacre, the Hebrew University Massacre, 2008 Demona suicide bombing, Karkur Junction suicide bombing, Egypt Air Flight 648, the Night of the Gliders, the 2004 Sanyo bombings, 2000 Ramallah lynching, and the assassination of Bobby Kennedy. Now, I don't really buy into innocent Palestinians. Stopping the Zionist movement would enable some sort of beginnings to peace and reconciliation. Now, there's a famous incident of the purported killing of a young Palestinian boy called Muhammad al dara supposedly by Israeli soldiers. The thing is, it looks very much like the whole thing was staged by the Palestinians. During this incident, several reports saw the Palestinians acting for the cameras, faking being shot, being taken away by ambulances only to be let out again unscathed, firing into empty buildings to make it look like there was a firefight for the cameras. Lots of people standing around grinning, taking orders from the organisers, a supposedly wounded man in the gutter talking on his cell phone, unperturbed. You can see the video for yourself at secondraft.org and I'll see if I can put a link to that. So into this mix of play acting comes the emotive picture of Muhammad al dara crouching behind a barrel against a concrete wall with his father, his young face contorted in terror. <sighs> or is it perhaps just because his father is reaching around and hang on, squeezing his arm and causing him pain, I don't know. I just sort of really noticed that when I looked at the picture. So voices are heard saying, the child is dead, or in Arabic, except he's not, you can see the child moving. And close-ups show the young faker clutching a rag, rag to simulate blood. <laughs> it's pathetic. The next day, bright red, flesh, fresh blood is found at the scene. Not, not black and dried blood, as you'd expect. I could go on, it's all at secondraft.org. But this faked scene became a cause celeb. It spurred the Palestinians into the Demona massacre, into waves of suicide bombings, and completely derailed the Oslo agreements. I think more than an end to Zionism is needed to get peace, the innocent Palestinians have to stop fanning the flames too.